you that you're currently based at. We do a very interactive session today. Helping others means we also focus a bit on helping you. And in order to do that right, we need to know who you are and where you're based, because otherwise I will give you wrong advice. If you're based in Lagos and I give you advice about stuff that is relevant for China, it will not work. So please take the time, um, go to your alias and change your name um, to the name and this city. Okay. Few people Hi guys. Here. How are you hey, doing? Hey, hey Stephen. I'm good? so glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you here. Where are you based, Stephen? Yeah, Zhuhai, Zhuhai, Guangdong, Zhuhai. Zhuhai. Okay. Mm. Cool. Okay, we have a few people from Hong Kong, Foshan, Wuhan, Paris. Fabian is too shy, too shy to change that. Shanghai, Adina is here. That's also nice. Malmö, interesting. Yeah, this will not be a very big session. I was hoping also for that uh, because otherwise it will be too messy. Um, let me change or stop the music. I need to fade that out next time. That is not too abrupt. All right. So um, welcome everyone to, I forgot actually which week it is, I think uh, three um, of the Startup Ecosystem uh, Builder Bootcamp provided by Flare and supported by The Lab, which is um, a company that I also work for, a state-owned enterprise in Beijing. And um, this bootcamp is meant for people around the world that want to learn how to contribute to their startup ecosystem, how to systematically acquire skills um, in order to uh, know what your startup ecosystem is, how you can improve it, and how you can um, also support founders locally. And one of the most important aspects that I think that is very often underestimated is helping others. For the few of you that come from uh, the organization Startup Guide, um, you probably are familiar with one of their values, helping others. They have uh, three values, which is uh, give first, help others, and make friends. Many other community organizations have similar uh, values. Techstars, for example, also has give first as one of their values. And um, they're repetitive. But very often people do not think further about what it actually means and how you can use these as a skill also in your everyday life. Um, I'm Yelto Wigner. I'm originally from Germany. I'm based in Beijing. And I used to be a strategy consultant um, by training, uh, studied in, in Germany, uh, but was sent through my job at one point to Beijing. I uh, took over there in office and worked there as a management consultant working with uh, small and medium enterprises and I helped them with market entry. Uh, at one point I shifted towards strategy consulting for Fortune 500. Um, so the perspective of helping people changed a bit. Um, and at, <coughs> sorry. And at one point I also became um, the uh, director for Startup Grind in Beijing. And um, the chapter managed to become one of the most active uh, chapters in 2018. Um, at that time, there were 600 uh, chapters of Startup Grind worldwide in 125 countries. And we had the most offline events uh, worldwide and one of the biggest teams. Um, I still think that we were successful because we understood the, the topic helping others the right way. Uh, what I've learned as a director for Beijing, I have then also tried to pass on as a China director um, and later on as an interim APEC director. Um, I think this is a very important topic because it is about a growth mindset. It is something that if you understand it well, it will bring you very far. It will help you to, be, to develop a sustainable living 
a healthier uh, relationship with the with your environment and the people that you're interacting with on a daily basis and it helps you also understanding a bit yourself. Um, again, as a reminder, please change your alias in, in, um, on Zoom to your first name and the location. The session will be around 20 minutes. Afterwards, I will go in the case of seeing how I can potentially help you or you can help me. Um, both ways are fine. But in order to do that, I need to know where you are and who you are. We have exactly one slide. It is not because the topic is especially easy. It is, um, I didn't want it to overcomplicate it. You have a relationship. You have yourself, the me, and you have others. And then you're thinking about how can you actually help others? In order to know uh, what you're doing here, you need to know who you are and what you want to do. I wrote here on the right, uh, the point vision. Why do you want to help actually others? And that can be uh, a career perspective. It could be that you want to become a good uh, consultant. I put your consultant. It can be in many of the cases from you that you want to become a startup community builder. And most of the examples that I will bring here today will be related to that. It can be that you want to be a better friend or partner. No matter what, this framework will help you. In order to know how you can help others, you need to validate that people actually need help. Very often people assume people need help without actually checking what is your problem. How I became a good consultant in one of my former companies was actually um, by going out and talking to my potential clients and actually getting in contact about what are you currently doing? Um, through that question, I learned about their business, their struggles, their success cases. I could also ask, what is it that is not going well? And in that scenario, I can check, okay, this is a problem where they will need help with. What I have to do afterwards, after I validated that there is something they need help with, I need to fit, uh, think about, can I actually do this? Is the me capable of doing that? And this is something that is very often misunderstood as a community builder, that a startup says, I need B round funding. And the community builder will yell, yeah, I can help you without actually understanding who that startup founder is, what they have achieved, what kind of investor they need in what market, what the details are of getting investment in that market, just going out and trying. There's nothing wrong about trying, but you need to know what fights you're getting yourself into. And you should do that smart in a in a step-by-step -step way. So before you go out and try to help a B round uh, or a founder that tries to raise B round, you have to assess a bit, what is it actually that this person is talking about? And um, the best thing that you can do is you have to gather experience. You should learn and you should do things. These are two different things. And most of the uh, time people um, tend to do only one and not the other. Um, so for example, if it's about investment and you are a startup community builder, you want to help a startup founder to raise investment. You need to understand what investment is in what forms it comes, what startups actually should receive funding. You also need to understand is the person ready to receive the thing that they are looking for. So it could be that this founder says, I want to raise B round, but they are only in seed round. They forgot about A round. And maybe they are not even capable or their pitch deck is not ready. That comes with experience. And you need to put a lot of time into learning what it actually means to do investment. Experience is something that is more sticky, um, but it's the harder way. So this person says, I want funding. I want B round investment. What you can do is, and that's a long run, you start a startup yourself, you try to raise funding, you succeed or you fail, you take that experience and then you help this person with the network that you have or with the experience that you have in order to upgrade them. Um, this, I cannot 
uh, is not the fastest way, but it's definitely something that I um, that I've been doing in the last couple of years. I used to be a community builder in theory, a startup community builder in theory. I help people without even knowing what it means to be a startup founder. I started my startup journey roughly one and a half years ago. I had the thought about starting something way, way earlier. But what I did was I went out there and I built a community about stuff that I had no clue about. So at one point I said, I said, I cannot continue this and try to help people if I don't even understand what it means to be a founder. So I, I looked at the me and I saw, hey, I want to help these people. My vision is I want to become a startup community builder, but actually I do not know how to do it myself. So I had to uh, take the experience. That's why I started. In the beginning, I just started without knowing what it means, but I step-by-step step figured out what I needed to do in order to succeed. I found technical people. I was lucky. I had a network. I um, started building a product without, without knowing how to build it. And I needed to gather the right people around me. So with that, slowly, I developed the skills about um, how to build a startup. And now I have actually both skills that of the community builder and that of an early stage startup. But I would not recommend actually anybody to listen my, at my advice as a mentor if you're a later stage startup. I still do that because people ask me to do that. But the only thing where I dive into is I take the fights that I know I can win. So when a startup comes to me, that is a, let's say an A-round startup from Korea that wants my help to land in the Chinese market. The one thing that I've learned is I know how to sell things B2B. These are the things that I can train them with, but I do not know anything about how to start a startup in Korea or how to bring a Korean startup here but I know what I do know and I know how to do it. Then often people come from different industry verticals to me and they say, I have this health tech startup, um, AI, uh, image recognition. I'm just rephrasing now the startup of uh, our head of AI because he also has a side startup. Um, and I want to enter the market. Then I'm not an expert. I'm not a medical person by training. I have no idea about how things work or what it means or how doctors read stuff. And it would be very dangerous for me to give advice or help uh, or instructions for any startup founder there. But what you can do is you can actually talk to people and build a network because you can help people in two ways. One is with your own strength and own experience and knowledge or with your network. And the goal is for everyone to build both. You need to have theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge to upgrade your experience. But you also need to know who in your network can actually solve this problem. If you really think about helping others, you have to consider both. What happens unfortunately too often is when you're in the consulting world is that people always want to take stuff to themselves. Consulting business is you get paid for getting experience because no consultant actually knows how to solve your stuff. They're just pretending to know and then they find it out on the way. This is how a Boston consulting group can actually pay or, or sell projects for 5 million because they have really skilled salespeople and they go to these Fortune 500 companies and say, of course we can solve that. You want to build like a cross-border cloud solution between China and US? Of course we can, we can do that for you but none of them has actually the knowledge. They get paid for figuring it out that, and themselves and building the experience and then figuring out how to, how to help them. This is one of the examples actually how you can, through the concept of help others, build a sustainable business model if you want to go in the consulting world. Not really my style. Um, that's why I wanted to drop out of consulting because I didn't like this getting paid for figuring out other people's problems. I wanted to leverage a bit on the, uh, the knowledge that is around me because I think the world should be a better play, uh, place and people should find the resources um, easier and not just through the, the funnel of one person. That also means that you should not be selfish. Not everything, you're not that important. You cannot know everything, you cannot help everyone. And if you accept that truly, 
you start understanding what the worth of your network is. And being able to help people is way easier if you're capable of building a network. I started building a network through Startup Grind. Um, a good example here is I started in Beijing first. I knew nobody from Startup Grind around. But um, so I could only help people in Beijing. But at one point, I started reaching out to other people around China and we exchanged about how we can help each other. We shared knowledge, we, we shared best practices. Now I can claim that I have at least a network in 30 cities in China and I can help people in different cities. I have no idea how to physically register a company in Foshan, but I know people who know how to do that. So now if a founder comes to me and this person says, I wanna register my startup in Foshan, I can say, hey, I can help you. Not because I can help you, but I know people who can help you. And this is the, the story of what you need to slowly develop. Um, we have uh, some people here who are um, more in the early stage of their career development. This is something that you can build over time. You need to know what you want to achieve. You need to know how you get that experience. You need to do things, start a startup, um, sell projects, build a product in order to gather experience, or you need to theoretically learn about things. Read a book, read about Lean Startup, think about it. I read about Lean Startup concepts before I started my startup, I thought I understood it. Then I started my startup and I read it again and I realized I didn't know shit about it before. And now I start realizing, okay, it actually makes sense. And now I can actually help people better. Step by step by step, the more you gather experience, the better you can help. And um, the better you will be also as a community builder. That is the same as a friend. If you want to help people and they have um, let's say you are, uh, you have a fight with your best friend. You can only help them if you have a best friend yourself and you went through a struggle before and you know how to solve that. If you haven't done that, how do you want to help them? That can be in a marriage, that can be with anything like this. Uh, so these skills, you also have to go through your own experience. You can read books about how to be a better friend, how to talk to people, how to better communicate, right? So um, very often people tend to try to do things too fast, uh, too much. Every day they start like, I need to do more. I need to reach out to a hundred people and like systematically try to solve everything or sell a hundred projects today. The goal is not to do more. The goal is to do less and do it right. You do it right, uh, no matter what, if you focus on how do you help the people in your network? That can be your users as a startup. And for that, you have to understand what is actually the problem. When you understand the problem from a first-hand perspective, you're capable of helping them. If you're not, you have to experience it yourself and read it, right? So that is the endless loop of where you have to go through. You have to know what your vision is, what you want to achieve, if you want to be a community builder at the end, if you want to be an ecosystem builder at the end, if you want to be a strategy consultant at the end um, and making money by helping CEOs uh, solving their problems, or if you want to be a good friend. Um, one thing that, uh, that helped me to grow was to naturally enter discussions always with the first thing in my mind, how can I help this person? I had an interesting chat today uh, with our China GM, uh, Silu, about sales. And this is now the Yelta way. It's a bit my, my own uh, skill set and my own experience that I have gathered. But um, the one thing that a lot of people always do is they, they hate talking to people because uh, or trying to sell anything because they think they have not, nothing to offer. They are cold calling. They are wasting people's time. As a startup founder, you think my product is not good enough or it's, you know yourself, it's shit. Um, but the thing is, the moment you start thinking about that, you are already standing in your own way. 
because it's not about that. It is about you need to enter this. And if you take as the first step, how do you help this person? You're open towards learning yourself about another person, which is a good thing, and the problems that they have and what you maybe have, what can help them. Anybody here in this room has something to offer that can help me, no matter your experience, no matter if you're a student or 20 years in experience, everybody has something to offer. And if you have this mindset of how can I help others and you, you have that any time of your life, you will have, you will grow, you will learn, you will never be bored, you will never be afraid of any situation because you will not stand in your way. It is about, I go now to the CEO and the goal is not to sell now this project. It's about how do I help the CEO? It could be that it turns out that the CEO really has a business problem and wants this solved, and then you can make money out of that. It could also be that this CEO has a personal problem and you can help him in different ways. And you will learn that CEOs are also just people, which a lot of people think they are not. They are so afraid of talking to C-level people because they think, oh, they have 20 years of experience. I cannot talk to the CEO of Microsoft. But at the end, they are people. But you also need to be careful about the time. So don't, don't uh, overstretch this, um, this uh, time granted. Make it, make it count that you figure out quickly what the person's problem is and how you can help them. And uh, the best thing for junior people I can recommend is actually trying to figure out how you can leverage your network because it takes years to develop this experience. Um, I, I always, uh, so no matter what kind of CEO I talk to, I had another person at university who studied something about uh, mechanical engineering or chemical. So I could reach out through my alumni network and ask them, what does it actually mean? Is that really a big problem or not? And they're like, oh yeah, that's a really tough problem. Let me talk to my professor. They know some people. And then I, I realized, okay, this person from Siemens who has a problem with um, machine um, with machinery, um, I cannot solve that problem, but through my peer student, I can get access to the professor who has a network to Bosch. And now they help each other, right? And this is how you can approach things. Um, the network, uh, if you're a natural in this, uh, it's good. Usually people have around uh, the capacity of knowing well 150 people. Um, I would not bet too much on that. Uh, I would early on try to build a CRM system. On WeChat, you can do that. So for those of you in China, you can use tags um, because it always comes in handy. When I talk to people, I always classify them. It's not the most, the most nicest thing, but that's how my mind works. I'm like, who are you? And then like, I'm a student. Okay, box student. And I was like, what are you currently doing? I'm studying my MBA. Okay, MBA. Where are you studying? Oh, Beida University. Okay, China. Are you already graduating? Mm, yeah, next month. Okay. So then I can usually think about how can I help these people? Because usually in this uh, conversation, it will lead to, uh, I'm looking for jobs, so where should I go? Then I can think about who in my network currently is looking for people to hire fr fresh from university, and then I can uh, help them out. Later on, on WeChat, I've classified them as um, this person looks for a job. The same is with CEOs. So if I talk to um, healthcare people, I classify them as healthcare people. If this is a healthcare investor, I classify them as healthcare investor. With that, you have a systematic approach about how you actually can help any scenario in the future. And this comes super handy because no matter what person will approach you after 10 years, you will be able to help this person. This is uh, probably it. Um, I, I'm more than happy to dive into examples um, from my community building from my way as an entrepreneur, as a consultant, um, as a friend. Um, yeah, but now I would actually like to get into the actionable part. And I see here already a lot of things. Um, Sabrina, 
to read the sorry just checking the questions that is okay um, maybe we uh, we first give um, into the room. Uh, is there anybody right now here in this room that um, that needs help in any way? We can make that a live scenario that we go through um, how to validate that this is a problem and I can help them, how I have the experience to do it, or how my network can help them. Yes, Nick, please go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm judgy, so I'm, I have turned off my camera. I can try it's not it's too slow. Can you hear me well? I hear a robot, Nick, but I, I hope it's not okay. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the camera, the video, because I think Ben will good um my name is nick i'm based in shanghai i am so my what i'm looking for uh and what i'd like to you know I, it, to the extent that it's something that um, is a good value proposition for for this community is uh you know how do i go about finding other entrepreneurs that are at the same stage uh as i am so and, and as you said yes i think the there's a clear difference between, for example, someone who's an aspiring entrepreneur, but who's never really done it, and someone who's like in the middle of it, uh, of getting started, and then someone who's already maybe a few years into it, and then someone who's actually, an, uh, I don't know, double exit entrepreneur, uh, and, and all these different stages are, mm. can, can be hard to tell up front. Yeah. So how, how do I go about finding the, the person at the same stage as I am? Okay. So this is now a live session and a few things that I need to do is to gather actually more information about Nick, otherwise I cannot help him. First thing I need to know is where are you originally from? What is your own startup stage? And why do you even wanna be an entrepreneur? So maybe these three questions first. Thanks, that's okay. really um, helpful. Um, so I'm, I'm based in uh, Shanghai. Um, I'm probably uh, slightly more um, experienced uh, entrepreneur. I, I worked for about 15 years. Um, I would say I worked about 10 years in very structured environments and for the last four or five years in a lot more new venture slash startup um, environment. And mm -hmm. um, my, um, the idea I'm working on is something that is more or less directly related to my, to the last three, what I've been working on for the last three years. But this time around, I'm trying to build it myself as opposed to working with a larger uh, foreign company that was that was running a similar you know service okay um, this is a good example because uh, I first of all I didn't hear where you are originally from uh, this is a very crucial information where are you originally from Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, so I was born in France. I'm a French national, and uh, my work experience is mostly was mostly based in uh, London, and later in uh, Shanghai. Okay. So uh, first things first. Why am I asking about uh, where he's originally from? My experience showed me in the last couple of years as community builders, especially foreigners being in a foreign place, that it's very helpful to be in a peer-to-peer -peer environment of the same country. So if I'm a German founder in Beijing, I should tend to try to find German founders that are also in Beijing because you have a cultural similarity, you understand better how to do things and you can share your experience with each other. Plus you speak the same language and there are resources to leverage on from your heritage where you're from. French can actually leverage on La French Tech which have tons of resources. Are you working already with La French Tech? You know, you know the French ecosystem so well. Thanks for um, thanks for the <laughs> shout out. Um, yes, I, so I'm trying to get into. I'm actually in their Pipit, which is the yeah the new so zero to one sort of startup um, stage founders. Okay. Um, but this is my first year with them, so I'm I'm quite new to that. Okay, cool. So how I would help you is I reach out later to you. Um, I'm not sure if we are connected yet on on um, 
on WeChat, but I would connect you to the live French tech people that I know um, that you have this environment. Then the second part that was uh, important to realize is that you evaded a bit my direct question about what stage of startup you're in. Um, you gave me a bit of background of you have 15 years of experience, 10 years in a corporate environment, but I still do not know what stage you're at. You could be idea stage, you could be A round, you could be B round, I have no idea. So now I need to know what stage are you at? Thanks, um, that's a great question. Um, I am currently working on my MVP. So I'm at um, the ID, I'm past the ID stage. The ID stage is something I've worked on for the last um, three years on a, on a, with a, a much more, uh, um, you know, mature product. But yep. this time around, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm building, so I'm in the building phase, building the MVP um, on no code. And um, this is a topic we've discussed with Fabian, I know, in the group. Um, so I'm, okay. I'm actually looking at uh, for other founders to build together on no code. Uh, but okay. my, my particular pro specific product is something that I, I um, I'm clear on the ID and less clear. I missed the last one, but um, anyway. Uh, um, I think, um, I, yeah, uh, I also wanna give other people the chance to, to get a bit of help. Uh, just um, to clarify a few things. If you're now in this situation and uh, can I have a short uh, raise of hand here in the chat um, or in general, who does not know what an MVP is? You can raise your hand or you can. So Della, you do not know what an MVP is? Or well, I do. It? I do. Okay. If you want, I can help you um, explain it. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> okay, Vitaly doesn't know that's, that's a joke. But usually um, for those people who are in a very early stage as a community builder, the term MVP is something that you're usually not familiar with. You do, maybe you've read about it, but you do not know what it means. Um, in order to know what kind of box Nick belongs to, so he's a French founder in Shanghai, he's an MVP stage, you need to know a lot about what is Shanghai, what are French founders in the outside, what is an MVP stage, and what does it mean to do no code, and um, what are peer founders that are similar to him, and how could he benefit from this? This is... 20 years of literature, I think, that you need to dive into. A lot of experience that you need to get into in order to help them. A lot of the aspects I cannot help them directly with because I'm not based in Shanghai. Last time I've been in Shanghai was two years ago. So a lot of things have changed, right? So I would naturally introduce you to people who are based in Shanghai, who have a French background and communities on the ground that do no code things. Um, probably you were already uh, introduced to Lerwagen, but there are a couple of communities that I can introduce you to, I would ask you now further about, do you make revenue already with your MVP? Have you sold anything? What's the purpose of your startup? And with that, I can help you further. Like I can introduce you to an accelerator who has a, like a alumni of startups. Um, and then I have to ask more about what kind of peer people are you looking for? Um, and why do you want to learn uh, about peer people? Are you looking for having a co-founder or what's the purpose? So this is one scenario and you can go very, 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 very deep. And the one, th <coughs> the one thing is, if you're unexperienced about, um, about how to help them, you can ask a few questions about like, why is it hard for you to find peer founders? And this question is not too unique. Why is it hard for you? Yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good question. Um, I thought I had a great, a good start with potential co-founders. So to answer your question, uh, first off, it is also about finding potential co-founders, um, but it's, and it's also for just like having, uh, you know, peers that are going through the same hurdles and uh, pain points on their own journey with potentially on their own, you know, separate uh, startup projects. 
Mm-hmm. And because I couldn't find it in China, um, well, the main reason is last year when I started on this idea, a lot of people that I knew um, were stuck outside of China, <laughs> including including the person I'm supposed to start with. Uh, she was stuck in Singapore for like nine months. And um, I ended up doing remote workshops. That's actually how I got to know about your about Founders Lair. Okay, cool. Um, a few things also about what Nick now said is, um, a learning for you, if you do not know it yet, it helps to have peer learning. And he just said that by asking him the question why he has problems. He's looking to have other founders to have peer learning. Checkbox done, you have learned something. Founders want peer learning. Next time you see a solo founder, you ask them to have other founders that you work with. And voila, you become a good community builder. Another thing is um, he couldn't find things in China. If you ask the questions well, you have leads about what kind of startup you can build. This was an introductory to our business model. I cannot find things in China. Founders Lair wants to help people to find things in China and beyond. We have listened to hundreds and thousands of founders. Everybody says like, I have no idea where to find that. It's a pattern. And we are not trying to solve that. If you ask people about how can I help you? And why are you struggling with that? And you want to be an entrepreneur. You know that. Your vision is, I want to be an entrepreneur. Just go out there and help and listen and dig deeper. And you find leads about what is a startup that you can do. And you do that just by asking the right questions and being persistent and learning about the stuff. Then you bring in a bit of tech, the right people. And if you're lucky, you're successful. Now coming to the next person. Um, Della. You raise your hand now for a while. How can I help you? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yelts. You've already been pouring us with the very genuine knowledge. And I, I believe it has tremendous value, not only for uh, building a community, for helping others, but in general to raise our happiness, our well-being in the long run. It's, it's a whole good goal you're talking about. And a quick introduction about myself. I'm originally from Hangzhou a very beautiful city with a west lake near shanghai and i've i've been I've born and raised there for 18 years and then i went to beijing for my university and after graduation well i went to the same university as sabrina it's Renming university it's oh. a great school right in beijing yeah and <laughs> and that's um afterwards i come to hc paris uh, which is a, a top business school here in paris and I chose the program entrepreneurship. So that's why the topics you're talking about, it sounds, um, it echoes with what I'm learning in, in Paris as well. And, uh, and here I'm in charge for this program. We have uh, 120 students in this program. It's a very uh, renowned programming entrepreneurship in, in France at least. And uh, um, for three years now, this program wants to expand more internationally. It has been very French based before. It's uh, heavily connected with all the French ecosystem resources, mentors, um, helps everywhere. But now it also recognizes the value of connecting more internationally. That's how they open up the program in English. Um, even though a lot of stuff is still being taught in, in French. And, uh, and now I'm taking the lead to bridge uh, this ecosystem with the, with, with the Chinese ecosystem that I'm more used to, I'm more familiar with. And uh, um, unfortunately this year we cannot go on a real trip to China because of the COVID and every logistic issues, but we want to build a virtual learning expedition where we show these budding entrepreneurs in France um, that China is a big opportunity land and uh, there's great things happening there. Um, and we, we should look uh, not just France, but also there. So it helps them to build a more holistic global mindset when they're starting the, the, their journey. About seventy mm. percent of our students would eventually found a, uh, their company right after graduation, 
and uh, yeah, that's that's one of the missions that uh, I'm very attached to, and I'm building on. And uh, um, God has it that faith, well, faith has it that I stumbled across uh, this community that Sabrina and and you guys are building, and uh, I also see you guys bringing out a lot of energy. So I was thinking, wow, we had a shared vision, and I would definitely want to invite you to be a, one of our guest speakers for this learning expedition and that could open the gateway open the door for both sides to exchange um i appreciate the kind words that was very informative i did not hear anything yet uh, uh, where we can uh, help besides me becoming a, a trainer in this program which is also good but then i can also say how you can help us as a startup because we would like to, to actually learn how our platform can help them to make cross-border experience, not just theoretically through training, but um, yeah, that we both have a win-win situation. That would be great. Um, yes, yes, exactly. Uh, one thing I wanna mention is, um, I'm not sure if all of you do this in the room, again, for the junior people here, or the people who are not doing that yet, always have a pen, always have a piece of paper. Your mind always gets distracted. You are not that smart to remember everything. The first meeting I had with my first boss in a strategy consultancy, I didn't bring a piece of uh, paper and a pen. He, he said like, leave the room, come back with pen and paper. Since that day on, I always have it with me. It's super important to keep the notes. I have that in lines. Every line is a hint for me where I can dig deeper about what is it that is, this is really about? How can I help you in that regard? Everything is a step. That is my, my systematic thinking, how I go through things. And it is easy for you to replicate that. Everything, every sentence a person says, make a line. And then if something doesn't add up, ask questions. With that, you, you train yourself about, you learn everything that this person does. And now I know a lot about Della and what she wants to do. And if I would be Nick, I could go now and say, hey, I've just learned from Yelta that there is La French Tech and they also bridge like uh, uh, French founders in China. Hey, Della, have you already spoken to La French Tech because they are also present in China and that could be a bridge too. And there you maybe get a second instructor, the da community builder, and you helped another person by just listening and receiving help and giving it further. And this is the difference between taking everything to yourself or sharing your network. And I still believe that helping others is something that will change a lot of things around you. And people will appreciate that. Because I could be, hmm, I know La French Tech. I want to work with them. I don't want to share that with Nick. I don't want to share that with Della. Why should I? But that's stupid. Like, if I listen to something and I know I can help them, I should do it. Good. Now coming, and yes, uh, we can do that. I would like to do that. I've been... Um, supporting uh, Huawei and Seeds of the Future with a similar project, actually. They also have students from Paris and students from Madrid, and they want to virtually learn about China. So more than happy to, to support with that. And we can talk later about how to do, to do that. Yes, now, amazing. Thank you, Yael. Uh, you're very welcome. Um, now, Stephen uh, from Zhuhai. Um, oh. Sorry, just uh, interrupting here. We had like kind of an order. So next should go Abdullah and then Stephen. Oh, he was okay, raising sorry, his sorry. hand for Abdella. a while. <laughs> okay, Abdullah. Are you if there? you're still here, yeah. <laughs> Okay, maybe then Stephen, uh, because you're here and you're online and we're sure about it. And Abdullah, if your internet gets better, feel free to jump in um, afterwards. Well, thank you so much, Sabrina. I'm so glad to be here and to appreciate the, the, the insight provided by our, 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 our speaker. Uh, my name is Stefan Romasi. Uh, I am Tanzanian. Uh, I came here in China to to, for studies, uh, as well as to, to learn more about uh, uh, technology in e-commerce and fintech. Uh, so uh, now currently I pursue my MBA and I will finish this coming summer. 
on June. Uh, I'm so passionate about uh, fintech uh, because I'm already I'm already uh, I'm already do some research and the, when I, I just use this Alipay WeChat Pay, uh, uh, it gives me some some insight and the understanding more because uh, back home, uh, of course, I'm coming from developing country. Uh, we don't have enough for this payment system uh, that will help people to, to make payment or to send money, to receive money rather than those mobile, mobile money. And uh, my, my intention is I wanted to create a system uh, like a digital wallet that it connect uh, the mobile money back home and resource bank to this WeChat Pay and the Alipay to allow people, particularly uh, for my country, to do because our China is our first exporter to, to 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 our country, so we bought we bought a lot of stuffs from China, and here uh, we have some uh, WeChat groups. We see how trend of buying things and even the stuffs in China, so uh, and people are struggling. Uh, they got a lot of challenges, particularly in payment issue. If I wanted, for example, if I wanted to send money or to receive money back home by using my Tanzania shillings to to you and uh, that RMB, sometimes I get a, 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 a difficulties. And we use always, we use the traditional way, like uh, I ask in my group, because we have a different groups of Tanzania. So I ask in group, maybe I have a Tanzania shillings, two shillings, I wanted to get a U1. So someone can raise, okay, me, I have U1, maybe to make it like a butter trade exchange. So I send it through, it's a mobile model bank account. And he, uh, for him, we send it through my WeChat Pay or Alipay. So this sometimes it create a lot of uh, fraud sometimes because we don't know each other. We just meet in those online. So some people, they lost their money because of those issues. Because yeah. you know, sometimes you send money, that guy didn't uh, send you back that money you need. So unfortunately, it disappears. So there's those kind of complaints around that issue. Mm -hmm. So my, 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 I'm seeking, first I'm seeking for, if I can get connection to, to because uh, my professional, I am a te professional technical engineer. I worked for Tanzania for five years in a state telecom field. Huawei is among of our, our main contractor in Tanzania. I, I, I did those uh, mobile service installation and configuration. So my, my, my intention now is I want to create this, these things uh, to help my Tanzania and the, Apart from Tanzania, even in Africa, because in Africa, even I, I just realized most of African countries, they don't have such system. When I just read those fintech company, particularly in Nigeria and the other, because Nigeria, West Africa, particularly in Nigeria and Ghana, they have different fintech. And they, I'm, I'm, I got one of, uh, opportunity to join with this Bata, Bata app, that is a, 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 is, is a mobile application to make those payments. And I came to realize that they don't, they, did, they didn't did those uh, send money through money, send money or receive money in, in China. And most of African countries depend on China to buy things uh, from China. So I yeah. wanted to create these things. I see there is a big opportunity uh, for my research and in my perspective. So if I can get the, the, the connection and somewhere to, to learn about, I'm ready. Because now I'm going to finish this program MBA, so I wanted to, to, to if I can get a chance to learn and to do those things, it's uh, it's well appreciated. Or if I can get the company to to work so for some time to get some experience, also it's it's well appreciated. That is what yeah. I, that is my, my concern. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, that was a good background that I got now. Um, thank you so much, Stephen, for that. There are a few ways how you can actually um, tap into what Stephen just said and how you can help them. Um, you can go the approach of digging deeper into a few things that he said, or you can also, um, if you are not 100% sure about what detail of what he said you want to dive into, but you made an experience in the past that is similar to what Stephen is facing, you can share this in a story. Because nothing is more um, clear than an experience that you went through that you can share with others. And one thing I can share is 
Um, I have met other founders here in Beijing. Uh, one founder is here in our space. He is for, uh, from Rwanda. I, I hope I, uh, I uh, say that right. Um, he is- Rwanda, uh, Rwanda. Rwanda. Rwanda, yes. Yeah. And um, he's an expert in digitalization here in China. Um, he has the mission to bring digital solutions back to his home country and solve problems there. The problem is the same as you said, the country is not ready because it's a systematic problem. The technology is not there and the mindset is not there. And he says he tried to solve the things by approaching it differently. He wanted to teach people in Rwanda about how to do things the China way. It did not work. He worked on that for years. What he did work on that then is trying to figure out where are similar people like himself so he looked at the embassy and looked for a community of Rwandans in China that are working at universities in technology fields. He built a community around that. And now he's trying to improve the funnel actually of people from Rwanda coming to China by improving the, the, um, the relations between the two countries and saying, there's more opportunity, more smart people that you can bring here. And the more you have cross-border experience, and the more leverage you get on one side, the more you will be able to change the system on the other side, because your problem is a systematic problem. It's education, it's technology. That is long-term. You, um, you are very excited about FinTech. It's the same thing. You need to surround yourself with people with the same mindset, peer learning. Try to create a, a funnel and to create leverage and then bring it back. Try not to go directly the way of having a fintech solution and a money share in a WeChat, because that is, that is a practical approach of using Chinese technologies in a way to exchange money. Try to talk about it more in a research way about um, what currently needs to be changed in your home country in order to actually install these payments. And that can be through introducing certain players. And there are players in China that, have, that are looking very tightly on Africa right now, trying to improve that. You can work with UNDP. You can work with people from Intel in Shanghai, um, like Urban X from uh, Capit Kane, uh, who runs an accelerator program. You can bring these programs to your home country to, to uh, bring opportunities for everyone who has a similar mindset as you, right? And now I'm just sharing a lot of stories and people that could help you and things. Now I could dig deeper into um, what exactly, but um, I think that that would be too much time now on this case. I would also like to, uh, there was another person in the room, but we can, we can uh, please reach out to me on, on WeChat. Um, more than happy to share things with you. Also the founder here in the space, uh, maybe you want to talk to him. Um, was there anybody else right now? The question? I think we have time for one more or help. Nobody needs help. Hmm. Um, only Fabien was writing about your CRM system, <laughs> uh, but except that there were no questions uh, from the audience. Okay. I mean, um, if that is the case, I'm also fine. Um, you know where to find me. Uh, I'm, I'm a very transparent and open person, easy to find, sometimes hard to get. Um, that has a bit to do with me that I'm doing too much, so I'm not listening to my own advice. Uh, and that leads into my WeChat is flooded or my LinkedIn is too spammed, and then I uh, don't see things. But if you really need help um, and uh, you do not know where else to get help, reach out to me. Uh, to the team, Sabrina's here, uh, Leonardo, Fabien, Alap, uh, even Vitaly is here. Wow. Um, we are all happy to help. And um, yeah, I, I hope this was uh, somewhat educative that you learned a bit about how to help others. Um, if you want to help others and you do not know how, also feel free to reach out to me. More than happy to share some examples on how to do that, right? Um, or I can even do that together with you. If you want to. Until then, thank you so much. 
happy weekend and see you soon. Thank you so, so much. Have a nice you, weekend. You too. Bye-bye.